video is the property of the Butler Ventomatic Corporation. It is intended to assist our customers in installing our products. Any reproduction of this video without the permission of Butler Ventomatic Corporation is in violation of law. Cool Attic presents wind turbine insulation. We're confident you'll have no problem installing our wind turbine after you've watched this tape. If you have any questions while we go along, call Cool Attic's toll-free 800 number, 1-800-433-1626. Our customer service department will answer all installation questions between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Central Time. By following our instructions, you'll install your wind turbine correctly and in a very short time. Immediately, you'll be able to feel the difference as the turbine pulls that super hot air out of your attic. So, get your instructions. You'll be able to follow along easily. There are only six steps. But before we begin, it's important to do a little pre-installation preparation. It'll save time later. First, gather all the tools and materials you'll need for the installation. And here are exactly the materials and tools needed. Gather them all together before you get started. The materials needed will be roofing nails and roofing cement. And the tools you'll need will be a screwdriver, carpenter's level, keyhole saw or saber saw, a putty knife, utility knife, a drill, hammer, ruler, a marker, and a ladder. The second component of pre-installation is selecting the correct location for your turbine. This is very important. If you're installing more than one turbine on the roof, refer to the turbine's installation instructions for correct spacing. Spacing the turbines properly on the roof will provide maximum attic ventilation. To help us, I've got George, an experienced professional, to assist in the actual installation. Now here's a roofing term you'll need to know, the peak or ridge line. The peak ridge line is the roof's high point, the top of the roof, and your turbine should be exposed eight inches above the peak in order for it to operate best. By exposing the turbine eight inches above the peak or ridge line, it allows the turbine to be open to wind from every direction and operate at maximum efficiency. Now, does it matter where we mount the turbine, if it's on the front or the back of the roof? You definitely want to put it on the back side so that it's not seen from the front. Okay, great. We're ready to get started. Do you have your instructions? Now, follow along through the six steps. Step number one. From inside the house, drill or nail a location hole through the roof. Make sure you center the hole between the rafters. Use your ruler to determine the center point. And this is very important, because if the location hole isn't centered correctly, you'll run into a rafter when you cut the hole, and you don't want to do that. Now remember, you want to keep the turbine mounted as close to the peak or ridge line as possible so that it'll operate at maximum efficiency. Step two, the rest of the installation takes place up here. George, what's next? First, we find the locator hole that we've put in the roof before. Oh, right, from inside. Exactly. Then we locate the flange right over the center of that nail. Mm -hmm. Then we mark a line, a 12-inch hole for a 12-inch turbine, a 14-inch hole for a 14-inch turbine. So you're actually drawing around the circumference of the turbine? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's going to come time to saw through? Right, but first we're going to put a hole right on the edge of this line. All right, and why do you do that? So that we have a hole to start the saw with. Makes it a little easier. Right. Okay, while George is sawing along that line, if you do have a saber saw, it's okay to use that too. Step three. Your turbine is separated into two parts. The first part is the base and riser. Part two is the turbine and its support shaft. Slide the top half of the base under the shingles. Remove any roofing nails that are holding the shingles in place. It may be necessary to trim some of the shingles so it fits properly. Now you're just positioning the base at this point. Do not permanently secure the base yet. This is an important step. With the base in position, we need to set and determine the proper angle for the riser. This is the riser. 
it will be necessary to loosen the buckle in order to adjust the riser. Now to do this, you may have to rotate the base in conjunction with the riser, and don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. It may take a couple of tries. But we keep trying until we make sure that the base and riser is perfectly level. So you can actually move the base around yes. and the riser separately. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now with the riser level, we're ready to move on to step number four. Next, put reference marks on the base and on the roof, like this. These marks will be used as a guideline to assure the base will be repositioned on the same spot for the final installation. Now all we have to do is remove the base and riser and go on to step number five. Next, tighten the buckle, but be sure not to over tighten. Now we're ready to finish up. Okay, the last step. First, align the turbine shaft support holes with the riser holes. Lower the turbine into the riser. Tighten the riser to the shaft support with the screws provided in the box. George, we have one complete unit now and we're ready to permanently secure the turbine to the roof. Well, all I have left to do now is just finish applying the liberal amount of roofing cement. Mm -hmm. We'll turn the turbine upside down. We'll be sure and use the reference marks that we put in step number four and carefully slide it up underneath the shingles. I see the markings right here. Right. Need to be sure and get it right back in the same spot. Now, will that roofing cement be enough to secure this? No, it won't. We'll have to put nails on the top and the sides of the turbine. Do we need to be concerned about sealing these nails? Yes, we do. We'll need to put a pretty healthy amount of roofing cement on the seams and the nails just to make sure that it doesn't leak. What if I have cedar shingles on my roof, George? Well, if you have cedar shingles, just go back and put a little bit more roofing cement on it, seal it off properly, it'll be okay. We're finished? Right. It was so easy. All right, but I have some questions for you. What if the turbine is not rotating properly? Well, if you level the riser properly, it should rotate just fine. But if it doesn't, just go back and re-level it. It'll be okay. So that means taking the turbine off, re-level, then putting it back on. Right. All right, now how about if it rains or snows? Do I have to be concerned about it leaking? Not at all. The turbine is designed not to leak in any condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a few weeks, am I going to hear some squeaking noises? No, the turbine has a plastic Delrin bushing in it, and it's designed not to squeak at all. Oh, that's great. It looks beautiful. In a bit of time, is it going to change color or rust? No, it won't. It has a galvanized coating all over the turbine with every part, and that will not rust. I'll tell you, you have all the answers, and you did a great job. Thank you. You have good information. You can do this, too. All of the wind turbines offer a limited lifetime warranty. Look for the warranty information on the back of the instruction sheet. Now, you shouldn't have any problems if you follow the directions. We follow them perfectly. However, if you do have questions, Cool Attic has a toll-free 800 number. Just call 1-800-433-1626. Call between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Central Time. They'll be happy to help you. Look for our complete line of residential ventilation products, power attic ventilators, whole house fans, and static ventilators.